Hi, I'm Rob. I make it better. And here's the thing. Every year I tend to do an uh, update. While physics may not change, instruction may change. And when people teach golf, they teach you to put the thumb on the shaft. I do not, because this creates a few problems. One, it creates two new directions of the impact. It means that you have to bend your wrist and hold it off, and the arm has to go you know, this way. So there's two new directions of the impact you have to time and coordinate and control, which no one in the world can do in a consistent way. Not even Tiger Woods in his prime. Second thing that happens to add further injury to the course is that you can't have connection. And the guy Ballard who been talking about connection for 50 years doesn't know that. So what I've been teaching people to do is I have like six, seven grip, grip layers. And I wrap a thumb around the shaft and hold it, you know, under the pad of the hand, not in the fingers. And then I add a little bit of a overlap grip like that. This is a Hans version of it. So when I teach shipping, for example, one of the things I then do, because uh, you know your brain has to learn things, and most people don't know how you learn and change things or whatever you call it. So stand up a little bit open, stand still with your body, lift the club up if you're gonna do a ship and drop it. And you will find that it will hit the ground every time. You can hit the ball if you keep the body still because you need to offset your body. And how you do that is by walking. You've been doing this your whole life. When people in modern golf talk about weight pressure, weight transfer, all that shit, it's because of the thumb on the shaft. That's the third thing that creates a problem for golfers in modern golf. And they don't know this. And this is all related to the, how the thumb works. And a lot of people then talk about in modern golf, you know, the V and all that stuff. There is no correlation there to a perfect grip. The only thing that matters is that your elbow has to be angled like this at the impact. Not like that, like that, right? And if your elbow is not angled like that, well, it doesn't really matter. Because, you know, probably be over the top or whatever else. So the correlation between your grip and your elbow at the impact, that's a correlation. Not the we or whatever perfect grip shit people talk about. So, this is what you do. And instead of just watching this, when you go the next day to practice it today or tomorrow, or whatever, make sure you keep your body still. Use my grip because it makes it go so much, much, much fucking easier. If you use the thumb on the shaft with this, it's more and more difficult. Don't do that. Keep your body still, lift the club out, drop it down. You have to do that because your brain and your nervous system learn by feedback. And feedback means that you hit balls, you know, like Hogan would say once upon a time, you dig it out in the ground. And dig it out in the ground, that means feedback in what you're doing. So you need to pay attention to what actually goes on. So then you offset your body. So you lift it up, let it drop, but then you go to the left side, boom. Cool, I hit the ball, nice. Now, the third thing I teach people to do is when they lift the club up and let it drop and offset, that you need to turn, no rotate. Rotation doesn't work, and it's everybody who teaches rotation do not understand why they need to rotate or whatever is going on in the swing because of the thumb on the shaft and all that stuff. So what you want to pay attention is to the word, you know, rotate versus turn, and I tell people to turn. Before the club and hits the ball, you want to turn. Now, most people, when I tell them that, the question pops up, when do I turn? That's the feedback of hitting balls on the ground does. This is how you educate your brain and your body, because your brain will figure out in the context here, okay, when do I need to turn? I need to turn before the club hits the ball. So when do I do that? Well, you hit a few balls, and if you turn too late, Ah, oh, that was a two bit stiff and oh, that was not good. Oh, a little bit too late. If I turn too early, probably gonna hit it way to the left also. So once you, you know, figure out, this is by hitting balls, chipping and pitching like that, until your brain figure out, okay, when do I need to turn? Okay. Oh, that seems better, okay. You can get behind that. And that's what you do. You hit a few balls, 
until you figure out, your brain figure out when to turn. And I tell people to address the ball generally a little bit more on the toe. And there's perspective thing here, right? If I look down at the ball here, I, well, I'm way on the toe here. But if I go like this, well, it's not that bad, actually. You see, perspective changes things. And what people do is they have, you build a habit. And if you're going to change that habit, you need to, if I'm going to address a little bit more on the toe, but I've been addressing it like this before, this is going to look wrong. But if I address the ball like that, and look going to look like that, and whoa, that's way behind. Mm -hmm. So you need to check those two perspectives to make sure you're, you know, addressing the ball better. And when you practice, you want to practice variation and more extreme, right? The brain learns best when it can go outside what is uh, comfortable and familiar. And at some point when you start doing this is that you figure out when to turn before, when, before the club hits the ball. Once you, your brain starts to get the pattern. Ah, oh, turn to all of that. Man, that's not good. This is what happens when you practice like this, is that the feedback in how the ball, you know, behaves out there, is when, oh, I turned to all of that. Man, that was not good. But it's just feedback for your system, so you go, okay, so I need to do a little bit later turn than that. Okay. And that's a straight shot. Cool. If you don't have the feedback and pay attention to how the ball behaves, you don't know what's going on. So you need to, you know, learn to pay attention to when you hit the ball, where it goes, and, what, and how it behaves, to get the feedback into the system, and then can improve to the point where you go like, okay, all I need to do then is to, to turn at some point before the club hits the ball. That means at some point your brain will be able to predict when that happens. And then you can start to, you know, once you master that, add more directions, you know, and spin rates or whatever people want to practice on. But this is the basic. A few years back, I had a new guy here, started playing golf for a year. He couldn't do shipping. Short game was horrible, he couldn't do it. And here's the fun thing. He was to be a natural level hockey player 30 years ago, but he couldn't do shipping. And uh, if you're a natural hockey level player, meeting Canada and such in uh, ice hockey matches, you should be able to do this because you're going to have good eye hand coordination. But uh, when people teach, you know, so I taught them this stand still with your body, lift the club up, boom, do that. Offset the body, boom, do that. And he watched that, went to practice, and then his best game now, when he plays, is a short game. He's basically probably a little bit better than two pros in that level of arena, you know, as far as I can tell. So remember, what you want to have at impact is that elbow being like that. And if you have a grip that forces you over like that, now you need to turn everything in, and then you top it is like that, and now you need to flip it over or something like that, or whatever else people do to on the golf. Because this, with thumb on the shaft, also forces hooks. Because that's how your wrist behaves. If you don't hold off your release, create two new directions at impact, the wrist and the arms going this way. Because your arms want to do this way. Your arms want to go this way, not that way. But they force your modern golf to go that way. That's what they teach. We've been teaching for 120 years. Right? So at some point, the brain will figure out when to turn before the club and hits the ball. And once you get that, it's gonna get better. That was a straight shot again. That was good. And you're probably gonna have, if you do follow my instruction of the takeaway, and the takeaway is very simple and straightforward. You keep your body still. You do this without the club first, and you tilt and lift your arms. There is no turn inward, there is no rotation inward, it's just a tilt and a lift with the arms, keeping your body still. This is what you do with the takeaway, also, right?
still fun a little. Once you have a club, that you do the same thing. Keep your body still. Now, naturally, your club wants to go a little bit inside by the momentum alone. But you need to do that, and it won't feel good. Because most people, when they just teach golf, teach, it becomes difficult. The stats from Trackman shows that the amateur male, 90% hits 250 yards and shorter. That means that you can't generate power with the thumb and the grip and what they teach you more than golf. You can't generate power. Because what they teach you is a swing uh, that's not natural, that has no connection, and that requires you to add more direction of impact with your fix and control. And that means golf becomes too difficult. And they've been teaching that to amateurs and pros and two pros and such for about 120 years. They never figure out that you need thicker grips. I have a car arthritis grip myself. I don't have arthritis, but this feels good. Six, seven layers of grip tape. And you change the one club until you're in practice with that, until you get used to it. And I use, you know, my pad of the hand, and I use a little bit of an overlap like that. And it will take it, uh, you know, some time to get used to it. The reason why you need to keep your body still is that because most people, I have so many members asking me this question. They post a swing, you know, the, you know, the takeaway. And they post the takeaway and they're like this, you know. And then they tell me this. You know, it feels like I'm way too, you know, in the wrong position, right, at the top and all that stuff. And I say, okay. Because they all do this. Way up here. Then when they're told to be up here, they feel, you know, that's not right. I usually just post someone, uh, you know, if they swing from the left to the right, I post, you know, a two pro level player, you know, on the tour. And usually they have the same position as a two pro player. And I tell them, why would you think this is wrong? Because what they teach you in golf is to tell you to rotate. And your brain understands that by doing it wrong. They tell you to rotate and your brain goes, okay, I'm gonna rotate now. Now you're stuck, you can't hit the ball here. All you need to do is understand, you're gonna tilt with your body, and your arms are gonna support every lifting. That's how you do it, boom. Oh. When you do that, you will find that your left leg bends. You go a little bit up on the toe, not that much, but it will be, be there to support your action. And my weight is on the right side, boom. Just like that. And you will find very, very easy to start getting, you know, the game on order. Last year in April, one of my members asked me to go because he said he's going to go all in on my grip and my takeaway. And he posted, I told him to post a video when he was doing the drill. And he did it the wrong way. He did it the way he felt familiar with. And that's the most important thing here is, when you have a memory, if you don't know this, every time in the context you build memories. That means when your brain has learned the memory and coded it, it's automatic. This is what people call unconscious, it's not unconscious. It's a contextual memory, right? So when you've been doing, you know, your takeaway like this, for 30 years or something like that, or 10 years or 50 years. Start doing this, will feel weird at first, because you've never done it before. And your brain will pop up and say, that's not how it's supposed to be. And the guy, he said the same thing, you know, he feels bad doing what you tell and teach and instruct. And I said, yeah, I know. And you have to keep doing it until it doesn't feel bad anymore, it feels good. And to this story, this guy, three years ago, went to a mountain coach and wanted to hit longer. He lost 40 yards for two years. He lost 40 yards with more than PGA instruction. He started to hate golf. He started to, you know, I don't want to play golf anymore. Play like shit. Start doing what I did, tell him to do it last year. He went, for, added more, he added 
you know, he, he, he regained the 40 yard he had lost for two years and then added more distance. Yeah. So he's like 290 yard average. And he's been able to hit bomb, bombs like 350 yards or whatever, right? And at the end of the season on vacation, he shot one on the par. And when he shot one on the par, that was a personal best. And this guy is on his way to become a scratch player at age 50, thanks to me and my instruction. Right? But people teaching golf, the thumb on the shaft creates so many fucking problems. It creates junior direction and impact you need to fix and control time. All right, you have no connection because you can't have that with that shit. You have trouble generating power. You create over the top, other release and whatever else, thanks to that. And it's all start with the thumb on the shaft. They all teach you that shit. And they don't know why people can't play golf and just have fun. One of my testers spent five years and went to 12 different PGA teachers trying to, you know, be able to fix the swing to play the game, he couldn't. He tried to foul PGA certified teachers. I did one session with him over Skype many years ago now and told him what to start working on because he wasn't doing it. Once he started applying that, he hit the ball bad immediately and, you know, and he's been stuck with me ever since because his game, and he told me uh, the last time I had a contact with him a few last week, because he's a tester now. And he said his game is better than ever. He has playing his best golf ever. He has so much fun out there. But everybody else teaching golf makes it difficult. And then you get frustrated and you get, you know, and you start believing, like many do, that it's a secret to golf. There is not. It's only a skill or skills. And if you don't have them, a skill is very simple. You can do this, and then, oh, yeah, and then I need to turn before impact. At some point, your brain is gonna get the message and how to do that. And then, because if you start doing this, an inside or something like that, then you're always gonna have to fix that in the downswing, and that's when you get into trouble and lose power. Because when you start to change direction when in the downswing to be able to control whatever happens when you hit the ball, this is why Tiger Woods always struggle from T because he had to fix his swing at the impact and he didn't know why. Most of the time he could do it pretty good, you know, with iron shots, but he couldn't do it with driver. And, you know, people keep telling me, you know, Morikawa is a great iron player. And I'm like, he lost a few tournaments because he couldn't hit the iron shots from fairways. Because the ball just went. And he didn't know why. And if you have, you know, one of the best players in the world and you have a swing coach that can't fix you, that means that the PK swing coach actually doesn't know what they're doing. Really. Anyway, I'm too tired now. I have something called ME, CFS, or people call it long COVID nowadays. I had COVID, uh, you know, five, six months ago. And it's no, uh, you know, for me it was, I was pretty hammered for a, for a month. And I had MECFS and I had it for 23 years. So, and that means that I have a low energy level. That means going outside, even though it's nice sunny weather, no wind to, to talk about. My, I'm just totally exhausted right now. And I don't actually want to walk. So anyway, I want to do this update because while physics may not change, my instruction works. No one else can claim that in the whole world of golf, which is kind of funny in a way, or tragic like a Greek history lesson, I guess. At least we're a little bit sunny today, so that's a good thing. Spring is coming this week late, summer is coming, but I can't play golf sadly due to the, my illness, but I can teach this shit better than anyone else can. So, I'll make it better, that's what I do.